country. And uh, I'll be just reading verse 9. 1 Kings chapter 3, uh, verse 9. And I want to read from the New International Version. Uh, 1 Kings chapter 3 and verse 9. And it simply reads, So give your servant a discerning heart to govern your people and to distinguish between right and wrong. For who is able to govern this great people of yours? Uh, this obviously is Solomon talking. Uh, God has now come to Solomon and simply said to him at the beginning of his reign as king, now that David is dead, the temple is being built, and uh, God said, ask me whatever you want, and I will give it to you. And ordinarily, uh, Oriental kings, kings of that day, would ask for one of three things. They would ask for long life. They would ask, obviously, for wealth. Or they would ask for the death of their enemies uh, in order to solidify their own power. But here, Solomon asked God to give him a discerning heart to govern his people and to distinguish between right and wrong. A discerning heart indicates the ability to listen to all sides of an issue in order to come to a true and wise decision. Uh, and, and that, again, would be a characteristic associated with a good king in the ancient Near East. And yet, I think we would look for that even today. Uh, with movements going on, Everybody wants to be a leader of some kind. So many voices, so many competing voices that it's, it's necessary, I think, particularly for those of us who are born of the spirit and are looking for God's guidance, that God would give us discerning hearts. There is a difference. I was reading in Daily Bread, and I actually got this from a Daily Bread that I read back in 2016 a difference between intelligence and wisdom. And it reads, there is a subtle but important difference between intelligence and wisdom. Both of them are desirable. Both of them are important. Both require diligence and discipline to acquire and exercise. However, wisdom is often considered the appropriate application of intelligence. Knowing something is one thing. Being able to act well on what you know is something else altogether. As Solomon shows, intelligence can be demonstrated by speech, but wisdom is demonstrated in both speech and action. Solomon asked for wisdom. He could have asked for anything he wanted. He asked for wisdom. What would you ask God for? in your own life, as you look at your circumstances, the things that you are dealing with, I would suggest here are three things that we can ask God for. First of all, ask God to grow us up in our faith. In other words, Solomon was wise, but his actions were foolish. Solomon is considered one of the wisest kings in Israel's history. In fact, his wisdom is considered incomparable. But if you look at Solomon's actions and the things that Solomon did, his action did not follow what his wisdom would have led him away from. And so his actions were continually foolish. He continually violated God's statutes. And as a result, he died roughly in his 60s. He did not live to be as old as David was. We need to ask God in this day and age to help us to grow and to mature in our faith. I love the Lord with all my heart, and I know I'm not all I ought to be. I'm not where perhaps I think I ought to be sometimes, but I know that God is moving me along. One of the things I suggested to folks is that when the coronavirus hit, it hit the churches in such a way that God put us out because God needs to sanitize the house. My hope is that going back in, we will be better and more committed to him than we were before when all of this started. In other words, God, we're listening now. 
you've got our attention. God, help me to grow up in my faith so I don't walk around holding the grudges I used to hold, that the little things that bothered me before won't weigh me down and make me lose sight of your overall purpose, that I walk in accordance with your will. The second thing I ask is that we would ask God to make us bold in sharing our faith. Once again, God has put us out the building, but it doesn't mean the church has stopped going forward. We have to witness. He said, be my witnesses in all the world, everywhere. And that for me includes cyberspace. Before all of this, there were a lot of church folk. I don't want to be on Facebook. I don't like conference calls. I don't want that. We had all kinds of reasons why we didn't want to do it. And now it's the thing that holds us together. And so we, and it, and it gives us a voice that goes beyond our community. I had somebody log on to our church service from Germany. We've had people logging in from Canada and Alaska that I would never have reached were it not for these kinds of things and the miracle of technology that we have right now. And so I want God to make me bold. God, let me not be ashamed. Let me not be so caught up in my own hidden agenda that I can't be bold enough to share your share what you've done for me. I can't testify for somebody else, but I can speak of what God has done for me. So I want God to grow me up. Help me to be more mature in my faith. Give me the outlook so that I see people through his eyes and not just my own. As I want to ask God, God help me to be bold in sharing my faith. As I look again at all the chaos and confusion, over and over I keep hearing Andre Crouch singing, Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him, there's no other, for Jesus is the way. I really do believe that. Now is the day and time for Christians to make real what they talk about behind closed doors. See, my concern is that when we go back to church, yes, we'll have to wear masks. But the day is coming when we'll have to take the mask off. But I'm not just talking about the physical mask. I'm talking about the religious mask that we wear, the fake fellowship mask that we wear, the anti-whatever new going on mask that we wear. Instead, let's take off all the masks when the time comes so that I can therefore be more open to serving God the way God intended and understand that it's really not about me. Oh, I know that's popular. People say that, oh, it's not about me. It's not about me until they don't get recognized for something, until they don't get called on for something, until their name is not put up in the program for something. You know what? When we first start back, we're not even going to have programs. So when we know about his name in it, that'll settle that. But my point is, it shouldn't make a difference. God, grow me up in my faith. God, make me bold about proclaiming the bloodstained banner in a world that doesn't want to hear about it. But then finally, God, deliver me from the evil one, as well as the evil within my own heart. Create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. This is what David prayed, because David knew he messed up big time. But David knew how to talk to God. Instead, he said, Lord, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. You see, my brothers and sisters, our struggle is not against flesh and blood. Yes, I know we folks are getting beat in the head. I, as much as anybody, stood on the Capitol steps on Saturday in Harrisburg and prayed for our state and nation, along with other pastors from other denominations. We prayed. But I called out the names of Breonna Taylor and George Floyd and Ahmed Aubrey, and we could go on with a whole litany of names. And we pray for the day when justice will roll down like water and righteousness like a mighty stream. Yes, but what keeps me going is, God, I need you 
to look at the evil that's in my own heart and Lord deliver me from that as well as from the fiery darts of the 